All right, welcome back. Well, Cardi, uh, let's um, talk about an interesting part of yesterday, something that made us all smile, some nervy moments, uh, especially, I think, in the second quarter. You know, but let's talk about D-Tigress. I mean, just when we thought winning one game was enough. A lot of people said they had won that one game and look, whatever happens. But certainly after that game, the belief and everything, and we were all behind the girls and they made us proud. Well, the one I, when they defeated um, Turkey, uh, personally, I didn't give them the chance. And um, for a stronger team, ranked seventh in the world, and the 34th ranked team, the Tigers of Nigeria, defeated them. I felt um, the Argentines would be um, up for the taking, and that we did eventually. The Argentines are ranked 15th mm -hmm. in the world. Uh, like you did say, never ending. Because for large spells of the game, it was just about one point, two points difference. And with how our girls struggled in the perimeter of the opponent, especially from trees, you wondered how they managed to still cope and win the game. Let's run through this results and you tell us the story i mean there's still a lot to say about the nigerian game yep um, i read your comments um online yesterday i was impressed with uh, your analysis of what went down and it's only fitting that you are here today i'm very happy to have you in the studio <laughs> but this is what went down these are the results on tuesday uh, uh, of course nigeria beat argentina uh, uh, well if there's any consolation we have won over argentina even though it's not in football australia made it easy for us so no complications Na defeated um, Turkey uh, 90 points to 64 Senegal lost to China uh, 75 points to 66 uh, Korea uh, lost to Greece um, there's a story about Greece we'll talk about that later uh, lost to Greece so uh, Latvia lost to the USA uh, it's no shame when anybody loses to the United States of America so I mean Latvia you know, can raise your head up high. So uh, the Belgians as well defeated Spain 72 points to 63. Tell us the story behind the numbers we're, we're seeing quickly, but you start with Nigeria. But basically, for the Nigeria Argentina game, um, the scoreline indicated how feisty the encounter was. The Argentines are not so tall, but they are very, very quick. Mm -hmm. And from trace, their conversion rate is pretty and uh, one of the best in the tournament. But what we did was that our girls were aggressive with their defense and they were able to uh, do a number of blocks against the Argentines. That we did. We saw Aisha Mohamed roll back the years. Mm -hmm. She used her physique um, to make her way through into the arc of the opponent. Evelyn Nakato, who had um, double figures back to back games as well, did excellently well. Um, uh, Tom Zobaf to, has to go the way of Promise Amo Kamara who had 16 points. The thing about the team was that um, it was a collective effort. About five of them had double digits, from Promise Namu Kamara to Izine Kalu and Maisha Mohamed, who had 12 points each, and of course, Evelyn Akato. Eventually, it was about um, the nature of our team, in, about um, defense aggressiveness that we've shown against Turkey. We were able to show that again against Argentina. It wasn't easy. Because at some point, it could be 47, 48, it could be 56, 55. Mm -hmm. It was very, very close. But our defending helped us eventually to get um, the victory. And the Argentines definitely felt outdone by it because they played very, very well. But our girls wanted it more, and mm -hmm. eventually they got it. All right, so good. Um, the, the other African team, I mean, what's, what's their story? Well, for Senegal, uh, they won their first game, their first group game against them, Latvia. But um, yesterday, uh, it was about not giving what you don't have. Yeah. They gave their best. But it just, just wasn't, wasn't um, good enough um, on the day when they lost 66-75. Um, um, uh, but uh, in a way, maybe they might just manage in their qualification game to get to the quarterfinals, just like Nigeria will be taking Greece. But let, 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 let's talk about that one. Um, and I, a lot of us... A lot of us, and, and I say that uh, we all, you know, we all humility. A lot of us, a lot of us thought, a lot of us thought, a lot of us nearly misinformed people. A lot of us thought that with that victory we were true to, to the quarterfinals. Well, it's quite different in basketball. Mm -hmm. At the way it's done, we have 16 teams. The top teams from each group will automatically qualify to the quarterfinals. Now, the second team in each group and the other group, the team that comes third, mm -hmm. will have to play what is called quarterfinal qualification. 
Mm. Now Nigeria came second in Group B. We won two and lost one. Greece came third in Group A. They lost to Canada and France, but defeated Korea. All right. Now we have to play to qualify for, for the, the quarterfinal, which is about bringing up um, competition. The competitive edge in basketball is quite long because even teams who fail to make it to the quarterfinals will still play classification games. To, to, you know, for placing. For placing. So that's how it's done in um, basketball. Now we have to take on uh, the Greeks, who, in my opinion, are not as strong as the Turkish or the Turks and the Argentines. They're quite taller, but I believe our girls have shown the desire, the art that they want it. And if they can get the better of teams like um, Turkey and Argentina, who are ranked higher than them, Greece is ranked 20 at the moment. They can say if we defeated a team that's ranked 7th and 15th, why not try and do the same thing over a team ranked 20 in um, FIBA ranking at the moment. It's not impossible. It's going to be tough, but I believe our girls will come out victorious. So is it going to be, is it going to be two in two for, for Africa? Um, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, especially... It's, it's, it's going to be difficult. Uh, it's going to be difficult because Spain are like the second best okay, which team of the after two USA. West African neighbors have, have a better chance of progression? Well, uh, Nigeria, definitely. Okay. We take on Greece. Based on what we've done in the last um, two games against Turkey and Argentina, I think we are good value for the victory. It's going to be tough, but I believe our girls will pull through. For Senegal, Spain are second on the rankings. They lost to USA the last time out. The US are the defending champions. Mm -hmm. And when push comes to shove, you see them at their best. The Senegal might just be punching above their weight, and I think it's the end of the road for them. I wish we could have... Um, two African teams making it to the quarterfinals for the first time. Nigeria already broke a record because we won back-to-back -back games mm -hmm. in the group stage like never done before. Now we're in the uh, qualification stage for the quarterfinals, and it's not impossible for us to achieve that. I would have wanted that for another African team, but the Spaniards are just too tough for Senegal to So uh, aside being patriotic, you feel that the girls aside, do have... Aside being patriotic, the, objectively the, speaking now, I think chance. Nigeria, they have a good chance. Going into this competition, I didn't think they could, but with, if, you, if, if you did see the game against Turkey and Argentina, those girls were marvelous. Even the coach ran out of superlatives to qualify the exploits mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. um, the girls. They yeah. did ex excellently well. They dug deep. They played as a strong unit, coherent. The only issue that I think they have is in the arc of the opponent. In terms of trace, they're having issues. Because um, Sarah Ogoke just couldn't roll back what she did against Turkey yesterday. But in trying to get into um, the opponent's perimeter and bullying them like Aisha Mohamed did, they did quite well. And if the likes of Aisha, Evelyn Akato, and captain of the Sardar Lenu uh, will be able to do what they did uh, yesterday against Greece today, it's not impossible. Then the hustle of Ezine Kalu is, is like never seen before. Yeah. The desire is just roofed up. And I'm rooting for the girls to do that against Greece today. Yeah, all the best. Uh, wishing the girls will cross the line, get to the quarterfinal. We're impressed already, but we know you can do more. We trust you. Nigerians are behind you. So the girls go and uh, make us proud. Uh, wishing the D Tigress all the best once again. All right, let's still talk about basketball. Uh, but this time, let's talk about American basketball, the NBA. It doesn't get bigger than that. And let's talk about the man everybody talks about, the king, LeBron James. And he's been talking, you know, a lot of things that he said has been unveiled at the early Lakers. A lot of people are questioning the drive, the ambition. Some people said, look, this is all about Hollywood. This is all about Hollywood. Uh, you know, he's going to be involved in a film. He has a production company. But he's been telling everybody, look, this is just purely basketball. It has nothing to do uh, with Hollywood. He also talked about the chances of um, uh, LA Lakers getting one of the rims. I doubt that though, but we'll see. But your thoughts, uh, Kyrie? Well, um, when he made the move, I was wondering, is he going to get the ring this season? In my opinion, definitely not. Uh, because uh, he's like a tour um, amongst rookies. Mm -hmm. The likes of Kyle Kozma, Lonzo Ball, um, the, the guys are more like um, two seasons in, three seasons max, 
and this is someone who will be going into his 16th professional season in the NBA. And it would help their cause, but would they amount to much? Remains to be seen. All right, let's listen to LeBron James. Uh, we hear what he has to say. Of course, Cardi uh, will, you know, anal analyze it further for us. Um, I'm truly excited, you know, about this opportunity. And then uh, I'm always uh, in, in a learning process. No matter, you know, where I'm at in my career, I'm always in a point where I want to learn and, and, and get things from, um, you know, teammates and, and, and coaches and things of that nature. So I'm looking forward to seeing, um, you know, what we all can bring to the table and how we can all bounce ideas and bounce uh, things off one another in order to, to, better, to better our games, um, uh, both on the floor and also, uh, you know, mentally as well. Uh, we got a long way to go to get to Golden State. Um, they could pick up right where they left off, starting with training camp. If they start today or whenever they start, uh, we're picking up from scratch. So we have a long way to go. Um, you know, we can't worry about what Golden State is doing. Golden State is Golden State, and they're the champions, and uh, they've been together for a few years now. So, um, you know, we put that to the side. We can only focus on what we can do to get better every day as a Lakers franchise, and, you know, and hopefully someday we can put ourselves in a position where we can compete for a championship um, as Golden State has done for the last few years. All right, um, Kaidi, you listening to him. We, we have to be quick, you know, with this because we're about to go on a break. But it, it seems to me, seems to me, I may be wrong, but it seems to me that he, he's admitting that, well, these guys are not championship level yet. Don't start talking about Golden State Warriors, but let's see how the season pans out. It seems to me like that was the same. Well, apparently, <laughs> I, I share a uh, same thought because it did allude to the fact that the Golden States have been together for quite a while. Now, they added Boogie. The Marcus Cousins that's making a good team better. They already have Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, wow. Andre Godala. Now you added Boogie. That means they are the top favorites going into the season. Now for LA Lakers, yes, Rajan Rondo moved from New Orleans Pelicans to join them at LA. But beyond that, I, if they make the playoffs, that will be success because they will keep getting better with season, uh, season after season. But this season, let's see how far they can go, but not to vie for the NBA championship. Uh, you're saying that with a bold face, they can win? They can't. Not this season. <laughs> okay, so for you, making the playoffs will... Making the playoffs will be success. Going by the fact that... Conference uh, finals, maybe? Well, even if they don't make the conference finals, just make the playoffs, because it's not going to be easy in the West. You have the Golden State Warriors, you have the New Orleans Pelicans, you have the Houston Rockets who look like uh, they, they want to just uh, match up with the Golden State. Now, Carmelo Anthony left, um, uh, what's it called now, the club with uh, uh, Russell uh, Westbrook, um, and now he's with uh, them at um, um, Houston Rockets. It means that um, CP3 and James Harden will combine, as well as Clint Capella wow. now in the West. But for the early Lakers, apart from Rajon Rondo, and um, LeBron James, the likes of Kyle Kozma and Lozen Ball, they flatter to deceive. So <laughs> I won't trade them highly. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, if you're a betting person, you know what direction to go. We're not betting people here anyway, but uh, that's just a take on, a uh, Cardi's take on uh, LA Lakers and LeBron's take on his new team as well. We need to go on a break now. When we return, we'll come home, uh, talk about the ITO Cup, the Nigeria National League, and a whole lot, all for you, of sports this morning.